Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations. Welcome to my stream. I do hope everything is working. It's all technically okay in the picture and the sound is all good. I do believe this one will be one of my smallest audience videos I've ever done because I haven't sent out really any form of notification that I'm doing this. So it's just a question of whether um, uh, people might actually get a notification from uh, YouTube, which of course we know doesn't happen very often. Um, just got all inspired uh, after watching uh, Crazy Ken's live stream. Excuse me. Um, uh, he was talking about the Apple thing, the Apple event, along with uh, Steve from Mac84. And um, I sort of came down here and I was working on a Macintosh SE30, one of two that I have here at the moment, and had problems and I fixed it. And I was just, just riding on that awesome glow of fixing that SE30. I th thought I'd come down and fix another one. Um, the interesting thing with, so just to start off with, so this is, oops, this is me knocking the screen over with my microscope. This is, um, this is the SE30 board. This is one of the later revisions of the board. You can tell because this is a soldered on a CPU, the earlier revisions that, that was gold and it was sitting in a socket. Uh, and the other difference is down here, this little, uh, capacitor is here on the earlier versions, the capacitor is down here. So um, I, uh, as I mentioned, this is one of two SE30s that I have here at the moment. Just finished the last one. The other one's in the ultrasonic cleaner, which I'm going to take out now and start drying. Um, and uh, they have both traveled some uh, distance. These two SE30 boards came all the way from Canada. Um, it is probably the most long distance recap that I have done thus far. Um, I have done recaps from different parts of the world, but uh, yeah, I think Canada probably um, uh, is the record for the uh, the longest distance travelled. Uh, and that old SE30, that other SE30 was getting horizontal lines, uh, often a problem that you might get if there's an issue with sort of RAM or ROM not making proper connection or something like that. And I found a nice big dirty trace break coming out of um, one of the RAM sims. So uh, to be able to fix that, see something so clearly broken and then to be able to repair it and have it working again, very rewarding. So thank you to the five people that are currently watching, uh, if, if I am to believe what YouTube is telling me. Uh, this is a special, special screening just for, just for the special people. Um, who are still awake at this time. It's 2 p.m. here in Sydney, Australia. Um, and, uh, and that it says, it says three here now. Well, as I said, if I am to believe, oh, now it's down to four. Oh, now it's up to six or seven. I don't know. I'm guessing a notification might have gone out, and so maybe people are starting to turn up. So anyhow, thank you to everyone who has turned up. Don't forget to smash that like button. Um, and, uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dana, for turning up. Uh, I do appreciate that. I tell you what, having just watched, uh, Computer Clan, uh, Crazy Ken's video, and he had 400 odd people at, at its peak, and then probably, as it got to the end of the, the video, came down to probably around about 200 people. I'm telling you, when you read some of those chats, hello, Steve, thank you for joining. And hello, ZombieGeek33. Um, yeah, some of those things that were in the chat during that uh, Computer Clan stream, Steve, I was just laughing my head off. I was just trying to take screen snaps of some of the, some of the gibberish people were saying. The more people you have in the chat, I guess the greater likelihood you have of that happening. Um, so I am going to stand up for a moment because I've got a, an SE30 board in one of my ultrasonic cleaners. I'm going to take it out. So, uh, off comes the lid. This is, I, I did this one in the little ultrasonic cleaner mainly because this is a smaller board and out, hot, out, 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 out. So this is the board now out of the ultrasonic cleaner, completely and totally sodden wet and steaming because it's hot, but should theoretically be clean. Looks good. My little trace repair is down here. You can barely see it, but it's there. There was another one I did up here as well, but it's looking good. And it was also a recap too. I'm going to do a recap. So I'm now going to put this into my, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Alcohol bath. I've got a little bath of 99.9% uh, um, isopropyl alcohol and a little 
you know, one of those little plastic, flat plastic storage containers. And I'm just giving that a little bit of a swizzle around in that now. And that's going to get rid of all of that, uh, or any of that uh, excess cleaning fluid or anything like that. It's going to displace any of that there so that we're just left with alcohol on the board. And of course, alcohol dries nice and quickly, so I'm going to give that a little bit of a, going to rinse some of this stuff off. Off comes the alcohol, yuck. And then that's going to go into my little oven, which I'm going to do now. Sorry, it's all off camera, but, you know, it is. Right, so there we go. My other SE30 board is now drying. Now we've got to go and do this one here. So, side view. Let's now try a microscope view. Okay, so let's start out, start off uh, up in this region here around the sound chips and this little cluster of four uh, electrolytic capacitors. And there's actually another one down here as well. This little cluster here. Let's start up here. Uh, as I said, the last board that I worked on was immaculately clean. Even though it had a trace repair on it, it was the cleanest SE30 I have ever seen. Uh, let's see if this one, this has come from the same person. Let's see if this one is clean as well. Um, okay. Oh, who's going to go there? Okay, where are we? Okay. Uh, this is the board with the black spot. Um, board with the black spot. Oh, hang on. Are you talking about that one that I posted on, um, on our little group chat? We have a little group chat. That's Mac Yak, folks. Uh, you talk about that board that I posted. That's not one of mine. That was from, uh, that was just something I lifted off Facebook. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not actually mine. That was, yeah, that was someone else's. So, yeah, I'm glad I don't have to touch that one. Okay, jumping across to the microscopy. Oh, we see some corrosion here. We also see some out of focus. Nice, 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 nice. Focus. There we go. So, that looks like bad. Um,. Here's a oh, anyone else seeing this? Look at this. Look at it. This is a shocker. Oh man, so much for a quick easy one. Far out. Hmm. Dagnabbit. Consarnet. Well, okay, got to do it, got to do it, got to be done. Goodbye, capacitor. Take these ones off first, even though these ones are probably fine. Whee! Goodbye, capacitor. Whoopsie. Oh dear, what have I done? Something's happened. I pressed something. Okay. Okay, what the hell, man? This is shocking. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Yes, it is Wednesday, I think. This is, and also... Okay, someone contacting me about recapping. I'm getting a lot of that lately. Um, I am seriously thinking about having to potentially put up my, uh, my recapping fees. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is that I don't just do recapping. I mean, I do recapping and then I do testing and I do diagnostics and all that sort of stuff. So, um, I, 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 and also when you consider how expensive a lot of these computers are going for these days, and if people want to see it as an investment, keeping these things going, um, it's not done out of greed. It's done out of necess necess necessity, making sure that I can maintain this make sure i can continue providing this service um so uh, but we'll see nothing no, nothing in firm yet no decisions made yet okay let's get some of these capacitors off mm. eba e by zero five hello hello david star thank you for joining nate trun, 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 nate thank you for for joining me Greetings from Tuesday. There you go. So yeah, it's Wednesday, two o'clock in the afternoon here. So um, I've had a go at Tuesday already, and I, I didn't like it too much. I was very busy 
I was very busy on Tuesday. All right, capacitor time, removal. Got my heat shield in place so that I don't melt that Molex connector because we don't want to melt stuff from other people's computers. Uh, as you can see, this one here is really bad in terms of corrosion and leak and goo and stuff like that. Um, well, I'll just stab myself with my tweezers. Um, these sorts of computers are the ones that really advertise how important it is to recap and get it done sooner rather than later. I'm not saying it because I want people to throw money at me or something, because let's face it, at the end of the day, uh, I don't make a huge amount of money from recapping. But what I do really get frustrated by is looking at something that I know would have been a far easier fix if it had come to me a little bit earlier. Tronerud. Tronerud. Is that right? Mate, Tronerud? Okay. There is a good chance I will forget that, and it's nothing personal. It's mainly because my head is like a sieve, but I will do my best to remember Tronerud. 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 There we go. There we go. Um, what is the origin of that name, Nate? I'd be very interested to know. Okay. All right. Let's put some heat shield here. I'll just bend this little guy out of the way. Um, so this is one of the boards that was, I think maybe made in America or somewhere like that, because some of these boards around this time were made in Ireland, but not all of them. The last board I worked on was made in Ireland, um, as in SE30 board. Had a nice big proud sticker on it, made in Ireland. Or was it assembled? One of the two. Oh man, this is so bad. So, I like to put heat shields on these things um, around some of these components. Um, not because those components can't handle heat or anything like that. It's simply because when you get these old, crusty um, solder joints, it often pushes little beads of solder through and the next thing you know you've got solder balls running all over the computer like I think there's one just there. There you go, see that little guy? Uh, hello Mr. Solder Ball. Okay, it's Norwegian. Okay, I grew up in Massachusetts in the US and I'm now in LA. Massachusetts, that was, uh, was, that, that was the nickname that was given to uh, the Bee Gees because of how big their teeth were. Mass a two set. Uh, uh, <clears throat> not my joke. Not very good either. Come on, it's Wednesday. What do you want? God, there's some evil here. Look at this. Look at this bit of uh, mask just coming off the top. Look at this. This is a bird. It's a bird in the end. Oh, uh, stick to your day job, Bruce. Yeah, I know. I should, shouldn't I? I'm not even doing that now. This is my, um, this is my moonlighting job. So sticky. So I got notified by the people who uh, I ordered my um, flux from that because the first package got lost and so they sent a second package. They notified me the other day that there was a notification that they received that the first package looks like it has actually touched down in Australia. So there's a good chance I'm actually going to get two deliveries of flux when it arrives. So it will uh, absolutely pour in at some stage. I've ordered um, 
So that will mean I'll have, I ordered in each delivery is two times 30 or two of these. So in theory, I should end up with four of them. So that'd be nice. Still Tuesday there. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, all right. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But yeah, okay. I accept that. But I don't, I don't think comedy should it should be forced to be any better on Tuesdays. So I'm basically just seeing nightmares everywhere I look on this board. So, hooray. I picked the right one to live stream, didn't I? Ooh, that one did a faint little pop. It's more of a little capacitor fart. Past a little bit of capacitor wind. I'll have flux coming out my iris. <clears throat> okay. Right, got one last little capacitor to take off here, and then we can start the fun job that we'll be cleaning this piece of stuff. See the way I'm keeping the uh, the swears at bay. See, I'm thinking about the monetization. You see. Ah. <sighs> Christopher Bourne, hello, thank you for joining. I was uh, chatting to you uh, during, um, what's his features, uh, between, uh, with uh, Ken's uh, live stream. So thank you very much for uh, sparing the time to come over here, fresh after that, however long it was, three hour live stream from Ken. It was quite something else, wasn't it? It was, uh, it was amazing what he just kept going and going and going. So the big problem we have with this SE30 at the moment, as I see it, is uh, that my hands are getting sticky, so I'm going to stick some gloves on. The big problem that we have, as I said, um, is uh, that um, I've completely lost the thread. I'm tearing my gloves as I go. Um, been just totally distracted. Um, no, I can't remember what the big problem is, but there are going to be plenty of them, whatever they are. When you remove a cap, it looks like it's left its legs behind. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's just the legs are just sort of floating on the top of that little bit of solder. And when the top bit of solder melts, the legs are able to lift up. And then it just leaves that mound of solder behind underneath it. Um, yeah, I mean, the interesting thing was that the last SE30 board that I was working on, the really, really tiny one, um, you know, the, the, the solder was still metallic. Um, you know, it's still still shiny. It still looked good. This stuff looks awful. Uh, why did the chicken cross the road? Um, because he wanted to get to the other side. Is there another reason? My chickens don't cross the road. They're not allowed out of the little area. Trapped. To see you recap. <laughs> oh dear. This one's going to be some serious surgery. This one. I'm telling you. So, first thing we're going to do is try and make these pads look all shiny and nice and everything is beautiful. This this will definitely win the award for one of the worst SE30s I've looked at in some time. Um, this is one giving us the kind of... Well, I think it's giving the Seema C-Mac. Look at that crunchy bit of yuck coming off. So this, these pads might take a little bit. Look, it did leave the leg behind. Look, it's a foot. Goodbye, foot. Um, yeah, I may need to get the old uh, scalpel out to do a bit of scraping on these because I think these are uh, particularly bad. Let's see what happens when we get a bit of uh, um, wick, wickety whack onto these. Here's some. Uh, hello, Andrew. Thank you for joining. I 
I decided that I would. Uh, I've I've got two two boards from the same person, and I done I have done one, and it's all fixed. And then I thought I'd do the other one because then I can get paid. Oh man, oh man, this is bad. So this is definitely going to need some scrapey scrape, uh, which is fine. Yeah, I know there's a lot of not looking hot here. So the component underneath is a little transistor. Uh, so it's this guy. I do believe that... Oh man, look at that. I don't know what I believe anymore. Far out, man. Look at this. Look at it. This is toast. Oh man, this is going to cost extra, this one. Sorry, dude. This is just the first one. This is just the very first cap that I'm cleaning. I can't believe it. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Wow, look at that burning there. See, I, that, that's not even a matter of scraping off the clean stuff. That's, that's gone. It's gone. It's just gone. It's totally gone. Trace break. Scream out every time you see a trace break. Trace break. If I do get this one working, I'll need to buy myself a drink. So it's not as bad as we thought. Got, oh, uh, actually, even that is that, is that broken? Is it actually broken? Get the old beepity beep beep machine out. Um, I'll tell you when it's beeping or not because you can't hear it very well. And I'll focus too. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, no, I can't see. There we go. Right. No beep. Broken trace. So we've definitely got a broken trace here. We've got a very, very dirty scalpel blade here. Um, are you planning to start a Twitch stamp channel too? It could be better for the streams. Probably not. Um, the next thing I need to do is I need to sort out this whole Twitter thing. That's my next, that's my next challenge. Um, someone tells me that from a marketing perspective, uh, if you have a YouTube channel that you're wanting to promote, um, Twitter is a good thing to have set up as well. And I believe most things people tell me. So, that's what it'll be. Oops. Out of the way, you. Thank you. All right. All right, so let's clean this up. It's all just very uh, repetitive, isn't it? It's just a matter of going in and doing these one at a time and then assessing the damage and then going and repairing the damage. Damage. Yes, please, Steve, do tell me everything I need to know about the Tweety Tweets. Tweety Tweety Tweeties.
And I'd also like you to tell me about how that t-shirt thing works. Because uh, I love the idea of you being able to just submit designs for a t-shirt and then set up a store and stuff like that. That, that just seems awesome. I assume they only print the shirts when they get ordered, so it means that ultimately the store just sits there and uh, and then they just punch out the shirts when people order them, which would be awesome. Because I've got a few ideas. I've got a few ideas for shirts. Shall I just take this component off? I mean, that's a rhetorical question because I'm going to. Uh, uh. Off she comes. One AF. I think I have replacements for those. Should I put a nice shiny new one on? Huh? Huh? For the low, low price. <laughs> Oh, come on, I'm giving you plugs, plugs, Steve, Mac84, all of, all of the, um, uh, all of the, uh, oh, 34 people are watching at the moment. That's a bit of a surprise. Hello, everyone. Here I am thinking I'm, I'm chatting to like five people, and there are 35 people watching. Oh, do you have to thank, uh, Crazy Ken for warming everyone up, don't I? Um, once again, I did mention this in my other stream, but I just hit, uh, 5,000 subscribers the other day. I think I'm at about 5,100 and something now. Uh, and I just want to thank everyone for that. That's absolutely awesome. I, uh, really did not expect to, uh, to get to 5,000 this quickly. I mean that most sincerely. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Rona! All right, now, right, um, <laughs> oh dear, okay, um, right, so I've got a little, I've got a container called miscellaneous, I think it's here, and in this little miscellaneous, I keep things, and this here is an NPN 2000 milliamp 40 volt transistor and I think this is the one that I need let me just double check it's got a code written on it. 1 a.m. look at that look at that oh that's 1 a.f. is 1 a enough is the m gonna get me is the f just like a date code I don't know I'm not sure I'm prepared to risk it I might just put the old one back again mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Hello from Arizona. Hello, Rick Fleming. Thank you very much for joining. Thing that, one of the things that always pops into my head whenever anyone says Arizona is I think of um, the film Starman with Jeff Bridges. And uh, he plays the part of an alien. So he's, lots of pop, pop culture references in this, uh, in this uh, channel. Uh, and he's got, uh, I can't remember the actress's name. Oopsie. Uh, she's the one from uh, uh, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And there's a bit where he brings up a little map of uh, the US. And he points to a location on the map and he says, do you know where this is? Oh, he doesn't say it like that. He says it like an alien. You know, he says it kind of a bit wooden. And she says, I don't know, Arizona maybe? And he says, do you know the way to Arizona maybe? And I just like that. Made me giggle. <clears throat> right. Okay, we've got to think about this. Got to think about what we're going to do next. We're going to have to do things in a particular order and stuff and things. Nathan Lee, it's actually on my time zone for, uh, for a change. Isn't that excellent? So I to tune in, seeing those but the US time zone live feeds are not ever going to happen. Um, I, 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 tr I try and live stream a lot of the time based on the US time zone. And that's mainly because um, 
uh, because most of my viewers are from the US. Um, it's, I'm not actually trying to, but having said that, I do also then try and stream at a time that other people can watch as well. So most of the time I tend to stream kind of evening, uh, usually uh, Eastern time. So because once, once again, I mean, uh, a lot of the people that, that watch me seem to be on the Eastern border. I don't know why, but you know. Um, Okay, come on, come on wire, there we go. Right, well I think, I think I've missed one, okay. I think that in a matter of moments I'll have repaired all of the trace trace problems for this one here. I'm just going to make sure we're both in focus because I'm struggling here a bit. There we go, it's better. Ah, Stuart McKnight, hello from Austin, Texas. Hello to you too. Just started recapping my Mac Portable. You lucky thing, you. Tell me, uh, Stuart, is that a um, is it a backlight or non-backlight version? So, in other words, does it have that little hybrid board thingy down the bottom left-hand corner? Non-backlight. Yep. No worries. I have never actually touched one of them, unfortunately. Um, but there is a bright side to that, and that is that there is actually um, a schematic diagram of the non-backlight version floating around. Shares a lot of similarities with the backlight version, but it's not exactly the same. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's a really handy thing to be able to uh, uh, to look at the schematic if you run into any strife. So you can, you know, get your multimeter out and do some, some tests and stuff like that. I have a copy of it up here somewhere. All right, okay. Now, where's Jay? Jay, you here? What do you reckon? How's this look? Are you going to give me any grief about anything? Is there something I should do? Jay's my repair conscience. He comes on, he looks at me, he goes, don't like the look of that trace there. I think you should fix that up. And I'm like, no, that'll be fine. And then two minutes later, I go, all right, I'm going to do it. Mr. Fahrenheit, hello. Ryan Pierce, New York City, hello. Hmm, okay, here comes here comes the bad news. Uh, this this here has um, actually created a a short that has burned things. So um, this is why we've got this kind of blackening going on all around here. Oops, I won't point with a toothbrush, it's not a very good pointing device. But all this blackening around here and this coming off there, this has actually burned through. So, you know, not good. That's not up to Branker standards. Yes, it is. Come on. I mean, there's only so much I can do in terms of cleaning this thing up. It is so bad. Um, I'm, you know... I want to clean off the, I want to try and clean off the corrosion and stuff like that and things and stuff. I want to make sure all the traces are repaired. I wonder if that's still going through. I mean, I think it is. They usually are. Looking, 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 looking. Da -da 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 -da. Looks like slate it does, doesn't it? I concur. That'll do. Come on. Just trying to suck up all the nastiness here. It's amazing what a bit of hot solder will do. Draw all that nastiness out. So they're only left with 
luscious, beautiful looking solder or solder. Looking better. Cannot argue with that. Looking better. Okay. Drink comes at a perfect time, and that's good to hear, E by 05. Um, and thank you very much for the congrats. Yes, uh, the old uh, SE30 is one that needs doing, so uh, if you've got one, get it done. I was watching uh, on one of the Facebook groups. There was a guy uh, who had just got an SE30. Um, I do feel sorry for people that perhaps don't know the SE30 history. They don't know the problems with them. You know, someone says, oh, look, I just picked up an SE30. Isn't that great? Same with the old color, cla sorry, the old uh, classic and classic too. You know, for anyone who has bought one recently, they may or may not know that what is that? I mean, why is there a little blob here? I just don't know. Anyhow, um, the uh, the uh, uh, the old classic and classic two, of course, they they're in just such a terrible state at the moment uh, in terms of capacitor leakage, uh, and I just don't think a lot of people realise just how bad they are or the potential of how bad they are. Uh, and you know, people might buy one online and they go, oh, you know, I've, I've, I, I, I'm all right. I can recap this. I've heard about recapping. I can do a recapping, and then they get it and they find out that. You know, it's just a mess. They've got to they've got to recap the logic board. They've got to recap the analog board. The analog board might be damaged from um, from the capacitor leakage, um, and they need to be cleaned. If the analog board isn't has, doesn't hasn't had all that electrolyte cleaned off, they won't work. Okay. Now, all right. Where are we going here? Uh, Classic has to get recapped, yeah. Alas. Alas. Let me get some UV uh, solder mask on here, and I'm going to hit it with my pew pew laser. Pew pew, the laser that is responsible for those little spots on my camera. Uh, because some genius decided to shine his... Um, UV laser at the um, at the camera. That's a special kind of genius that is. So I do most of my UV masking at the end once the board has been cleaned, but I want to mask this out before I put the replacement cap down. So that's why I'm doing this now. All the other stuff I'll probably do. Later, I'm just going to put some on here as well, just in case I don't want that to get too close to the, uh, uh, what do you call that thing, the uh, the pin coming out of the tantalum capacitor that I'm going to use to replace. So, there we go, that's looking nice, it's a nice coating. Uh, okay, Stuart McKnight, uh, where are we? Uh, okay. Some say don't recap with tantalum due to fire risk. What say you? This has got to be one of the most often asked questions I get. And I do actually have um, something on my Recap a Mac website in the frequently asked questions that goes into this a little bit. And I think one of the things you need to remember, I think one of the most important things to remember is that um, if you look at, say, the Quadra 700 or the Quadra 900, they use tantalum caps for that. Apple use tantalum caps for that. Whatever the reason might be. Budgetary, reliability, who knows what, what reason they gave. But they're all the same. They're the same sizes. Ultimately, they're, they're, they're one of about four on, on the Apple computers. They're always around about the same. 47 microfarad, 16 volt. 100 microfarad, 6.3 volt. 10 microfarad, 16 volt. And 1 microfarad, 50 volt. They're the most common ones you see. So generally, when you look at any of these MacBoards, you see those size capacitors floating around. On the Quadra 700 and the Quadra 900, all of those size caps are tantalum. And those computers are still going strong with absolutely no capacitor issues whatsoever. 
So as far as I'm concerned, if it was good enough for Apple to do, it's good enough for me to do. Um, uh, tantalums are incredibly reliable. If they're used within their spec, they are really reliable. One problem with tantalums is that tantalum is quite a rare mineral. Uh, so we're not necessarily going to be in a situation where tantalum is always available. Um, you know, we could end up with a situation where there becomes a tantalum shortage. Now there's niobium, that's another one, but there aren't as many capacitor sizes available in niobium. Niobium is a very similar metal to tantalum. Um, but of course, one of the things that I will probably make this change at some stage fairly soon. I'm probably going to change over to the polymer capacitors. They look like electrolytics, but they actually have um, a polymer like powder inside as the electrolyte rather than a liquid. And um, and oh, they're they're you know they're still a bit more pricey than the tantalums, but you know those the price of those is going to come down and it'll all equal out, and then I'll probably just end up using the polymer caps in the future. I kind of like tantalums. I like working with them, but you know, at the end of the day, got to make sure people's boards are all, you know, working well and everything. So anyhow, there's my tantalum answer. Ah, uh, what? Who's going? Who said what? Good night, Steve. Steve, what? Steve, I have to run, but good luck, Bruce. Thank you. Sorry, he's probably already gone now because he wrote that like about half an hour ago. Um. Right, okay, um, I've had a Mac SC for years, but always wanted an SC30, but after listening to your channel, sounds like they're more prone to cap leakage. Oh, they sure are. Oh, Ed Studio Workshop, thank you very much. That's an incredibly generous uh, super chat, so I say uh, thank you very, very much for that. It's much appreciated. I might get up and do a little dance. I think you've earned it. No, I won't. I'll save you from that. Otherwise, people start paying me not to dance. Um, so, um, yeah, so the SE, uh, SE 30, well, the original SE, the capacitors that it has on it are, uh, primarily, primarily, uh, electrolytic axial capacitors and the ones that have the leads coming out both sides. Um, and they're like these ones, like these ones. And they generally don't have problems. They will one day, but at this stage, they're still running pretty strong. So the original SE, no. The SE30 has surface mount electrolytic capacitors, same as this one here. Well, this is an SE30. That's why we're seeing that. And yes, they are way, way, way more prone to capacitor leakage. You can happily buy a Macintosh SE off eBay or something like that, and there's probably about a 90% chance you'll just plug it in and switch it on. It'll work flawlessly. Hard drive might have failed, something like that. A floppy drive may not eject anymore, but the computer will start up. Um, so, uh, whereas, if on the other hand, we are talking about an SE30, chances are, if it hasn't been recapped, it ain't going to work. All right, I'm going to just, uh, I'm, I'm getting a bit behind on the chat here, because um, to my surprise, there's like 30-something people watching. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Uh, it's custom. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay. Right. Still don't have a solder on stage for the accent. Oh, thank you very much. I'll do my best to give you my greatest Australian accent here. G'day, how's it going? All right. Yeah, good, thanks. Um. Uh, see me, see Mac. Is that how it's it's spelt? Uh, is is current fault I've been dealing with on a customer's repair. Stressful. It is. I cannot begin to tell you how stressful it is. Uh, Edge Studio Workshop. Um, Seema CMAC, as I've described in one of my other videos, is a little bit like a car's engine light. It doesn't necessarily point to a specific problem. It just tells you there is a problem. So, um, and this is one of the things that people say, oh, look, this is what's happening with my, my Mac. What's the problem? And it's like, well, it could be anything. But chances are it is a broken trace somewhere. Um, so uh, you just have to go over these things with a really, really fine tooth comb and look for anything that might look a little bit sus. And we're going to be doing that with this one because this one's a freaking shocker. Uh, energy show doing that with solder paste sometime. Yeah, look, I can. Um, so, 
obviously the way that you would typically do solder paste is you know solder paste you would generally use with a stencil i mean that's more for like surface mount stuff but you would normally put uh, you put a stencil down, you put solder paste down so that the pads are covered with a bit of solder paste. You then put the component on top, you hit it with hot air, and the, the solder paste melts and holds it on. So it saves you from actually having to use a soldering iron. I don't like working that way at all. I like using a soldering iron. Um, the other thing is, of course, your components need to be heat resistant. Uh, and things like, you know, the old electrolytic caps, if you hit them with a hot air station, the plastic on the bottom is going to melt. Um, and, um, uh, is that top pad still connected with the pass through? Yes, I think so. You talking this guy here? Yeah. And it looks, cause it's got a little dip there. I think it looks like there's a gap, but I'm fairly certain that one's still okay. I'll check it because, because that's what I do here. I'm going to go beep, 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 beep. Yep, got a beep. Got a good old beep. Beep, 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 beep. Right, let's put a capacitor on this, shall we? Yes, let's shall. Uh, we've got a nice little, uh, oh, God, gunge. Uh, I've got to put a nice little 47 microfarad 16 volt on here. I do have uh, some capacitors lying around somewhere. Where the hell did I put them? Up here? Yeah, that's it. 47 microfarad, 16 volt, the most common capacitor size if you're going to be doing max. Yeah, you're going to want a lot of them. And I, I'm running low already, and I just bought 80 of them just a little while ago. Uh, 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 okay. Um... Yeah, this is right. Uh, talk, just uh, the, a mention there that eBio5 mentioned about um, uh, the UV laser. Um, I have basically Jay to thank for that, for discovering that during, I think, a Paul Daniels live stream. Um, Jay had watched, I think it was Paul Daniels, drying UV solar mask with a light, and it just dried instantly. And... And Jay sort of said, hey, how are you doing that? And someone came and said, oh, it's with a UV laser. So but the two of us, Jay, House of Moth, and I went on a little bit of a quest. I was probably a little bit more um, driven by that quest than he was. And I went and bought a whole stack of UV lasers. Uh, some got delayed. Ended up buying three in total. And uh, the first one that arrived turns out to really be the best one that I got, I felt. Um, I haven't got a link for them yet because I can't find them on freaking Amazon. So I'm probably going to need to set up some sort of uh, eBay link. I mean, they've got them on, I think, AliExpress and Banggood and stuff like that. But what you need to search for is do a search for 405NM, N for Nelly, M for Mary, 405NM uh, UV laser. And then see if you can find one that looks like this. This is getting stuck under here looks like this good they run off um i think triple a batteries but uh this one i've got mine set up to a power supply okay so i'm pretty happy with this region here i'm feeling fairly confident that i have resolved issues now let's move on to these three because we've got some lovely burnage going on here as well and look at this guy i don't know what's going on here this looks like it's a, 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 a manufacturing thing that doesn't look like yeah, there's, there's like a little bit of lump on there in the uh, original making of this board, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Let's get some flux on here. Oh, and a bit of wire that we don't need. Flux. We love flux. Uh, GT, night, Bruce. Got to work in the morning. No worries. Thank you, GT, for joining. I do appreciate it. I do know how late it is over there. Um... Silly time zones. I mean, if the Earth's flat, shouldn't we all be on the same time zone? I don't know. I don't understand. This one's nasty. I can just feel lumps. It's burned right into the board. Yo, 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 yo. 
Come on, Pad. I'm going to bring you back to life. Your life's not over yet. Micro soldering supply. <laughs> there you go. Anything else? Unfortunately, no progress. Session 30 to me are the most stressful max to work on. I'm actually I'm getting pretty calm with these things now, I'll be honest. Um, I've I, I've just worked on so many of them now that I feel like I've seen most of what they have to throw at me. Um How scummy that is. Gonna need uh, to get the old scalpel blade out here for some scraping. Uh, I mentioned that I use curved blades because I love the way they scrape. Um, I've had, uh, well, Steve, I think, has bought some of these, and I think Jay's bought some as well. And there's generally been the, the reaction of, you know, it takes some getting used to working with a curved blade, and I would definitely agree with that. Um, I first started working with curved blades. I guess it was probably during the 90s um, when I was working in a design studio or pre-press studio, I should say. And um, we got an accidental shipment of curved, curved blades and I actually found that I really liked using them compared to the straight ones. So, uh, and... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Scrapey, scrapey. Scrapey. But... If anyone is looking to buy these, um, someone did inform me that apparently Exacto makes a curved blade. I've never tried it. I cannot recommend it. All I can say is that apparently it exists. If you don't want to go down the path of getting these Swan Morton sterilized surgical scalpels, these things are sharp. I can tell you that for sure, because I stabbed myself with one once. In the elbow. In the elbow. Of all places. Okay. This has got to look better. This is, this does not look good enough yet. This is not, I cannot step away from this yet. Oh, thank you very much. Look at that, $13.99 in Canadian money. That's awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I have to do more uh, live streaming on uh, weeknights, don't I? This is uh, fantastic. I normally stream on the weekends. Uh, it's mainly because I do I do do a lot of this work on the weekends, and this does what I'm doing at the moment does gobble up a big chunk of time, and uh, I just have to be mindful of trying to be as productive as I can during the week so that I can earn money to put food on the table. Which Mac model has the most damage corrosion at the moment? Which model has the most at the moment? Um, probably the classic and the classic two. I mean, if you're talking about a gen general model of, you know, like if if uh, if we're looking at, it, at what's out there, yeah, I mean, probably the classic and classic two. The main reason for that being that the analog board leaks so badly. When your analog board leaks on a uh, uh, on a classic and classic two. It can do some real damage. Um, but, you know, some are worse than others. I mean, you can have computers that are made at the same time. Uh, oh, Mac 2s, of course, are really bad. Uh, I've been getting a, quite a few Mac 2s lately. I've got one more to do. I've got two just there that I did just recently. So I've repaired uh, two of those, and then, of course, I had another one before that. So they're all they're all getting the same problem so they they have the um 
the soldered on axial battery and they um they don't seem to explode the same way uh that some of the other batteries do but they do have a sort of a slow burn type corrosion going on um what temperature do you have your iron set to uh normally for smd work i normally go for around 300 it might be overkill but it does work well not that harsh on the pcb it's it's a very interesting question there um ed i do I do talk about this a fair bit in my videos, mainly because I am a bit different. You know, I mean, everyone knows I'm a bit different, but um, I work with a really blazingly hot soldering iron. Way hotter than I actually would recommend other people um, use. Uh, it's, it's because of the way that I solder, um, and I tend to solder where I use a really, really hot iron, and I, look at that, trace break, and I, um, um, and then I, I regulate, kind of regulate the temperature with how quickly I have the iron on the board. I move it around quite quickly, that sort of thing. So, um, so just so you know, I have my iron set on 450 degrees Celsius. Now, do I recommend other people do that? Absolutely not. Um, it's how I like to solder, but it's not necessarily what I would recommend to others. So, um, and I do, I use lead free solder. I don't use the leaded stuff. I don't like the lead, the, sorry, I use leaded solder. I don't like the lead free stuff. I'll make sure I say that around the right way. Cause it was actually, I came out of my mouth as literally the exact opposite. So what we're actually looking at here is we're looking at me soldering with 450 degrees Celsius on my iron. Uh, but as you can see, I don't, the iron never really hangs around in one place for very long. Um, and that's how I kind of regulate, you know, I stop from, you know, burning holes in the thing. Because I'm going to tell you, if with this iron at this hot, it would just be so easy to lift off a pad if you weren't careful. Um, I also find that the high heat works really well with, oh my goodness me, look at all of the generosity going on. Thank you very much, Charlie Geller. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly for an Australian $20. Thank you. And thank you to Stuart McKnight for the $10. I assume that's in US money because it has no, um, little, uh, prefix in front of it. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. This is, uh, this is quite the, uh, the live stream today. I'm, uh. People are just sort of outdoing each other. It's fantastic. I'm not going to object. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so, um, given Australian time zone, I need to get you an EV blog to do a joint tear down the fix up. Yes, I don't think David Jones even knows who I am or if I exist. I, I'd, I'd be fairly intimidated by him, I think, if I was to spend any time with him. He is so smart. Um... What's that other guy? What's that other Aussie bloke? Um, you guys will know the one that fixes all the MacBooks. I, I, Hugh Jeffries. I had never even heard of him until quite recently. Isn't that terrible? Um, you know, I was someone to, oh, this is Hugh Jeffries. Oh, I wonder who this guy is. He comes on with an Australian accent. I'm thinking, what? I look down and I think, oh, you know, this young fella's doing well. And then I look down at his subscriber numbers and I'm like, are you kidding me? Who is this guy? Um, so, yeah, that was... Uh, you know, good on him, I tell you. I tells you. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Well, we're starting to look a little bit better here. I mean, it's nothing awesome, but it's looking okay. I've got to sort this little bit of yuck out here. I don't know if that's broken or not. Let's go down and have a look. Zoomy zoom. Yeah, that doesn't look too crash hot, does it? Does not look too crash hot at all. Nope. Nope. Might come at that from the other side. I'm going to probably try and suck out the solder from these. I just think it would be better for me. More advantageous. Okay, so that's this little row of guys here. 
This is the other side of the board, as you can see. Well, no, you can't see because it's out of focus. You see it looks a hell of a lot better from this side. Okay. Uh, so no. I am making a bucks tonight. It's crazy, isn't it? It's awesome. All right, let's see if we can get some of this out. I'll just get some uh, flux on here. Basically just wanting to hollow these out. Um, there we go. This one's still got a little bit in there. There we go. Oh, hello. I can fill them up with solder later on, but it'll just make it a little bit easier, I think, for fixing things up. There we go. So, I do feel compelled. Okay, so this is the one that I'm most concerned about. The one that's sort of in the middle of the camera there. Um... He just looks nasty. Nasty. Oh, um, yeah, hang on. Um, Kyle GP, hello. <coughs> All right. It's 1.05 a.m. here, bedtime. Good night. Thank you, Andrew, for joining. I do appreciate it. I, uh, I know that this isn't necessarily the best for everyone's time zone, but... Yes, you got to mix it up, don't you? You've got to make sure you're uh, not being, uh, not trying to uh, exclude people all the time by just sticking to one time zone. So today, I thought we'll go for a different time zone. What time is it here? Yeah, three o'clock in the afternoon. Quite late. Right. It, it, this is just a dog's breakfast here, um, so isn't that great? Might sink, clean up some more of these holes. Getting my gloves hooked in here. Uh, are we having fun? I hope so. Now, I didn't watch the Apple event. I probably will, but it's mainly because those events usually happen at about three o'clock in the morning my time. But uh, I have to say that that iPhone 12 Mini, I think was that what it was called, Mini, something like that. I reckon that will eventually be my net, my new phone. I have been using an iPhone 7 now since they came out. And it has been wonderful. But I do feel like that, that one is one potentially for me. Okay. Thank you very much, Nathan Lee. Um, I do apologise once again that uh, people do have to dash off and, uh, uh, you know, sort of go to bed and stuff like that. I totally understand. I, I will not criticise. I will not talk badly about you once you're gone. I was watching uh, Ken's live stream. There was someone, I don't remember the person's name, it kept uh, on saying in the live chat, do you like me? <laughs> That's an odd thing to say in a live chat, isn't it? I don't even know you. Okay. You know, I mean, 
I really should be smashing this with the old multimeter, shouldn't I? I'm just checking to see. But you know, one of the things I absolutely hate doing is checking the multimeter through the board. I hate it. Right, let's get some of this stuff. Not sure how to do this. I've never actually done one like this before. Um, I'm gonna find the best way of making this work in two directions. Through you go. So, how am I going to make this work so that he's attaching that side and attaching that side? Huh? Huh? I might be able to just get a big enough solder blob on the thing to bridge it across. I'll try that first. So, I think what I might do. Well, yeah, I'll go that way. Oh, I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit on this one. This is where we did get all the fun stuff happening. So everyone here, I know they've just been waiting for the fun stuff. Now's the fun stuff. Thomas Armstrong. Hello. I read things in a really weird order. People have probably noticed that there are times where I just go in and I'm answering things from like way, way back in the chat and stuff like that. Okay, now, can I make a blob to go from this side to this side? I, I'm, I'm beginning to think that I can't, but we'll try. Blob, blob, blob. No. All right, can I put another piece of wire in there, perhaps? Will I fit a second piece of wire in there? I don't want to try iOS 14. I'm going to go 12. I've been rather disappointed with iOS 14. Um, a lot of people have been quite happy with it. I know that. But there are two features that I used on it all the time that are gone. And I missed them. Um, and I'm sure they removed them because some people didn't like them. Uh, but I did like them. So, no. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I say my, my iPhone 7 still still goes well. Um, I've really got nothing really to complain about. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. That is a lot of solder I've got on the end of my soldering iron. Just flicked a little bit off. Okay. There we go. Come on. Okay. That's good enough for me. C is for cookie. On the side. Now, I of course would not be completing this repair unless I joined the two together on the underside. Failure to do so would be very bad. NK Morpheus, hello there. I had a question. This weekend I started recapping my board. When I reached C6 on my SE30, I had trouble trying to get the solder to stick to the tantalum and solder pad. Interesting. Well, when it comes to putting solder on anything, uh, the three magic ingredients that you need to have are um, uh, clean surfaces, number one. Plenty of heat, 
number two. And flux. So generally if something's not sticking, it's because one of those ingredients is missing. Either your iron is not hot enough, um, or you are not getting the two things hot. Because here's a really important thing. It's one thing to have a hot iron, but you, when you're soldering things, you need to be soldering, uh, you need to be heating the thing that you're soldering. You know, you don't put solder onto the iron and then try and, tra try and transfer it. You can do that. I do do that. I use flux for that. But, you know, you need to, they need to be, the, the things that you are soldering need to be hot. So that's, that's one really important thing. The other is, of course, the pads need to be clean. Um, solder does not like sticking to things that are dirty. Um, so that's why I spend all this time going in and cleaning these pads as best as I can. Because then I know that when I put, uh, I put the solder down, it's going to stick to them. Uh, and then, of course, as I say, the other thing, very important, is to make sure you have uh, flux. Plenty of flux. Fluxing and flux. Um, so yeah, that's that's generally that's generally my recommendation. Those those three things to just make sure. Um, solder pad lifted. Any suggestions on how to fix this problem? Well, aren't you lucky that I have a video on trying to repair damaged pads? And just so you know, I'm not actually repairing pads. What I'm doing is I'm using wires instead of pads. So if you get a chance, jump onto that vid and um and have a look at uh, repairing damaged pads it's on the featured videos of my uh on my youtube channel and basically what i do is i i, I get a series of examples of, of a board where a pad is gone and then i say okay how am i going to reconnect this how am i going to make these electrons flow again um so uh now i really should get at this with um the old beepity beep beep machine Beep. Okay, because we got some ugliness here. Good. 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 Which one am I going to? Good. Good. Come on. Good. Good. Okay. Now, you know what I'm going to have to do, don't you? I'm going to have to flip the freaking board over. Need to put my goggles on for that. Can't on the solder onto the board is cold and lift the pad. Yeah, so that, that kind of sounds like you might want a little bit more heat on your iron. Um... Whoopsie. Right, so let's just jump across to this one here. And oh, craps. I know that one's going to work. Plus, I repaired it. Right. Okay. Feel good about that. Everyone else feeling good about that? I am. Okay, I'm just finished recapping FC30 power supply and analog board. Just out of curiosity, Thomas, was that an Aztec power supply or was no? Which one is it? Is it an Aztec? Is it an Aztec? And the other one's a Sony, I think. Was it a Sony power supply? I think the Sony's are the more common ones. I came across a non Sony the other day. I uh, didn't need recapping though, so I should have still photographed it, but you know, I'm a bit of a slow learner. Oh, guess what I got in the mail today? I'll give you a clue. It's a Macintosh 2 series computer. It's one of the 
Macintoshes that has a 2 in front of it. Just arrived today in the mail. See if you can guess which Mac I got. If you're a watcher of my streams, you might know. I have talked about it. Mm -mm. Remove the old caps. I crush them with wire cutters, then remove the itty bitty leads. The twisting off of my pigeon gives more chance to save the pads. Yeah, look, I mean, I, it's not a way that I'm going to condone. Um, it's, I, I use hot air. I feel like it's the safest way to, to work. But, um, you know, I mean, if it works for you, that's all good. Um, okay, focus, focus, focus. Focus. Am I in focus? Yes. Two FX, two X. No, no. Keep guessing, keep guessing. But you're definitely on the right track. I mean, let's face it. There's only so many of the Mac Two series, so you'll get it eventually. I'm not sure I understand. Wasn't talking to you, Siri. Okay. Um. No, not a VX, not a two SI. We're narrowing it down now, aren't we? A, a CI? No, not a CI. I think we've just about narrowed it down. Do 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 CX, yay! We got there in the end. So yes, I just had a two CX arrive today in the mail for me. Yay! Unrecapped. I think it works, but. I'm not even going to test it until I recap it. And interestingly enough, I don't have a recapping guide for the 2CX on my website. So, I have to make one. Take some nice pretty photos. Well, that's a bit thick. Let it on a bit thick there, Bruce. So, um, I'm really starting to, I'm really starting to get annoyed at myself now about something. I'm going to probably do something about this now because I want to do a proper job. Christopher Ball, my first Mac. Mac 2 is just awesome to and I agree with that. Um, so I'll just tell you the quick story about the 2CX. So um, 2CX was a computer that, that I used to work with back in the olden days when I used to work in a design pre-press place along with the 2CI. Um, and I, a 2CI was one of the first Macs I wanted to get into my collection. And I did, I managed to get hold of a 2CI. I have one, I actually have three now, but one of them doesn't work. Well, actually I'm going to have two in a little while because um, I'm giving one away. But, um, the, anyhow, the, the, uh, the point is that I, um, um, I really wanted to get a 2CX uh, in my collection. And just so that I can have the two, the two, the CX and the CI. I'm going to have the two little, uh, the two of the C range. And uh, yeah, so I was basically on one of my uh, live streams saying how I would really like to find someone who might be interested in swapping, doing a swapsies, swapping me a 2CI for a 2CX. 
and uh, someone answered the call. And uh, he posted it off, and it's arrived today. It's missing a few bits, so I need to make sure that when I send him the 2CI back, it's missing the same bits, because otherwise I won't have the bits to put in them. So there we go, that's me being a little bit more thorough. I have to clean something else for a but it looked rather charred. Okay. Yeah. It's very hard to tell, you know, I, I know that when uh in in the days when Steve Mac eighty four was live streaming some of his early soldering because Steve's come a long way with his soldering when he first started off. You know, he, he was, you know, reasonably capable, but he hadn't a whole lot of practice at the, the really fine soldering. And I know that Jay from House of Moth and I used to sit there watching him solder. And it was so hard to try and translate what someone should be doing or potentially what the problem was as you're watching it. You know, we'd look and we think, you haven't got enough heat in your eye in there, you know, or, you know, you're sort of, you're sitting it there too long or whatever the case may be. You know, we would be trying to provide this guidance. It's, it's, it is very hard to do, um, you know, sort of when you're sort of guiding someone because there are so many things that you can potentially be doing that might be causing a problem. Um, just curing my UV laser. The mask, solar mask, with my laser beam, pew pew. Uh, there we go. I got the other laser, I, I showed it on my other live stream recently. I got another laser, and it's one that allows you to focus the point, and you can focus it so small that you can actually burn things with it. How cool is that? So I was just sitting here burning little holes in the table. When I say little holes, I do mean little holes. Okay, now I can clean that now it's dried. Okay. So I don't have actually have very many things left that I want in my collection. I mean, I know, you know, there are a few, if the opportunity arose, I'd grab them. But I mean, most of the computers that I have wanted over the years, I now have. I would still like an LC575. I've got a 575 logic board, but I don't have the whole thing. Because if you are going to buy one of those, you have to buy it from someone local because you can't ship those things because they just fall apart. Um, what else? Uh, what else am I after? I'm after um, um, I'd love a 2FX if one ever came up but I'm not holding my breath for that one it's funny the way we who have been collecting for a while can reminisce about the times we used to buy vintage Macs for reasonable prices. Like, uh, I bought my Color Classic, I think, for... Oh, geez, I paid for it. Probably, I might have, I, I might have paid 200 for it, and I felt like I, I probably paid a little bit too much at the time. I felt like I had got a little bit desperate. And should have maybe waited a little longer for a cheaper one to come along. But I paid a couple of hundred dollars for my Color Classic. Um, I've got a few classics, classic ones, classic two, stuff like that. I don't think I paid more than about 50 bucks for either any of them. Um, and once again, I have always basically felt that I had been a fairly impatient vintage Mac buyer. And, and spending a little bit more money than I should have. But, you know, come on. Nowadays. <laughs> um, there's a, 
in here in Australia, there is a Macintosh SE, not SE30, just SE, currently listed on eBay for $1,200. It was originally listed for $1,500. He dropped the price down to $1,200. Still hasn't sold, nor is it likely to. But when someone lists something like that, and they may never sell it, it'll just sit up there on eBay just wasting space. But what, what the danger is, what it ends up doing is... People who might be looking for an SE, they might jump on there. It helps to kind of normalize the, those prices, which I don't really don't like. Um, you know, you could just look at it and say, hi, oh, you know, it's too expensive, don't buy it. He's never going to sell it. Sure, that's right. But when comes up, when another one comes up for $500, people are going to go, oh, wow, and they're going to grab it, even though 500 is still too expensive. But because there's that one sitting there for $1,200, when the one that comes up for $500, it's going to feel like a bargain. And that's what I kind of don't like. You know, you could have the attitude of, well, look, he's, not, he's never going to sell it. What, what harm's it doing? You can just let that thing sit up there on eBay forever. The harm it's doing is it is kind of starting to normalize those silly prices. Um, or it's certainly pushing some of those prices up higher than they should be. Now that's just uh, that's just how I feel about it. And I know that's certainly how some of the other vintage collectors feel about it. Um, I know that Steve from Mac 84 has actually put a bit of time into making a price list. Now, of course, it's totally irrelevant for that price list to be used out here in Australia, because we generally pay about double, at least double, of what's the going rate of what's going in on in the states. Um, you know, if you're looking at, I don't know, buying a classic for, I don't know, a hundred bucks or something like that, it's going to be 200 bucks out here. I mean, classics are going for ridiculous prices out here at the moment, but you know, on, generally on the whole, I find that whatever prices, um, are going in the, in the States, they're going to be at least double here. Um, okay. Uh, we're looking at backlit portable LCD screen and cable. I uh, don't suppose anyone has a dead portable I could buy. Flat flex cables are going to be the eventual death of power books and portables. Yes, yes, they are indeed. I agree with you on that 100%. In fact, if you're just over 10 years here in the UK, you could get an iBook and SE30 for under £15. Mental how prices go up and up. Yep, I agree. I'm working on an LC3 that I suspect has a bad Ygritte chip. I recapped it and it's still dead as a door now. No chimes, no nothing. Board looks immaculate. No corrosion whatsoever. Have you done the power supply? Uh, or have you tested it with a power supply you know works? Because um, power supplies on those things are just as bad as the logic boards when it comes to recapping. So, yeah, assuming that you've ruled out the power supply, well, we can then sort of move on to some other things. Uh, recap it, there's still there's no charge on it. Hmm. So many Macs passed through my hands. Uh, I think back and go, I sold that for 20. Yeah, no, I know. It, it's not even the resale value. It's me. I just get, I get a bit upset that I, I don't have some of those Macs anymore. I had, um, I had, I, I had a lot of some Macs and I wish I'd just at least kept one of each. You know, I had so many, like I had G3 towers and G4 towers and, mirror drive door and what was the one with the four little dots on the bottom of the was that the wind tunnel mac i can't remember what was that one called um, i had one of just about every of the you know you know g3 g4 towers and i gave them all away every single one of them i didn't keep a single one and now i just managed oh, and of course they all had zip drives in them as well because you know I, the, of where I worked, so every single one of them had a zip drive. So that was a, that's always an, an extra bonus as well. Um, and I just wish I had kept some of those. Um, you name it. I mean, I could just just go on and on and on and on about all the Macs that I don't have anymore that I wish I still had. I had an LC four seven five that I sold with an Apple IIe card, and I've been desperately looking for an Apple IIe card for ages, and I. I, when I looked back at my eBay sales, because I keep a little folder on my computer with all photos I've taken of all my eBay sales, and I was looking at this one going LC475 with 
to it, he can't. And I'm like, why would you do that? I mean, a 2E card takes up no space at all. Just at least put that in the drawer. Save it for a rainy day. What were you doing, you darn fool? Okay, that one's on. I mean, that one, the join's never going to look too good because that pad was an absolute nightmare. But it's still, uh, it's still going to pass around the tricity. I got a whole bunch of my solder on that other pad there, so I need to grab some more. Okay, so can I do this now without having to take that solder off? These are going to look a little bit wonky because oh, all the mess around them and everything like that, but when it comes to one with this level of damage. You know, you, you you don't get that that uh, wrapped up in the visuals. Okay, so I've been saving the best to last, just like uh, Vanessa Williams. Right, let me just uh, let me just uh, do a bit of the uh, this and that. I'm going to just take these pins out, just so that I don't accidentally jab myself while I'm working in this area, which has been known to happen. Come on. Come on, man. This is this one's the really hard one. This one's attached to a great big plane of copper, and so it takes a lot to get the heat onto this one. Come on. There you go, Um Yeah, oh wow, too. Yeah. There was an Apple network service 700 or so 200. Wow, okay. Uh, this is a recap and test on another LC3. Oh, okay. Uh, for sure, recap and test on another LC3. Okay, so we know that the power supply is, is fine, yeah. Um, the thing I basically say to anyone who's ever, I mean, if you didn't think the caps looked that bad to start off with, I mean, it may not have been the caps in the first place, but, um, I always, you know, sort of check the recapping um, first. I always consider that's the most likely thing to have gone wrong because I am human. So when I'm doing recapping and something hasn't worked, I always like to check my recapping to see that I haven't stuffed up. Um, if you're using tantalum caps to replace, you know, they had those wider pins. And so sometimes if there's a, a break on the... Uh, Oh, let's not put that there. So if there's um, uh, a uh, if some of the mask has come off the top of some of these traces, and then you accidentally have, you put the tantalum down that has the wider pin, and it touches a little bit of exposed trace that's running underneath it, you can sometimes create a short. I've done it. I've done it. Man, these are so bad, these ones. We're going to have a few trace repairs here, aren't we, folks? Ah, do you think wicking those pins out will clear the hole easier as the heat is transferred all the way through? Yeah, maybe. 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 I'll have to try that sometime. I've generally found that what works fairly well is if I just get a really big glob of solder on the end of my iron. So that glob can go right around the pin and that pin can get nice and toasty. Um, oh yeah, we got some juiciness here. Once we clean this off and the dust settles, we are going to be Going on a scraper thon. We've got some burns here again. Um, the electrolyte has actually created shorts underneath here, uh, which has ended up creating this burn. 
I'm out of focus with the camera again. All right. All right, there we go. Oh, I didn't do the, I didn't do this little guy down here. Come on, little guy. Melting some plastic on here as well. It's going to smell awesome. What's happening? What's happening? Okay, uh, sure. I believe no sound is due to the one microphone cap and the 470 cap, but you, yes, recap, all due to the fat cap. Oh, sorry, what are we talking about? Where are we going? Uh, School nursery third aid does looking almost fully working, just no sound for some reason. Yeah, definitely needs recap. Yeah, it's exactly exactly what uh, um, Ed Studio Workshop said. Um, you know the uh, so this is this is an SE thirty, as we know. There it is. Isn't that pretty SE thirty? I wonder if I can zoom a Rooney here. I'm not zooming where I want to zoom, but I am zooming. So there we go. Let's try this. On the board here, you got two sound chips, the left and right channel, those two there. And then you got these little four caps down here. Um, those are the problem. Uh, they're, they're the problem you've got there. The ones that I'm actually working on right this very minute. So, uh, uh, yeah, recap should fix that. <laughs> See, I'm singing Vanessa Williams now, that's no good. Don't even like that song. Okay, now I'm going to have to get my uh, Q-tip cotton bud. And I'm going to have to rub the dear life. I'm not too concerned about if I do any trace damage here because, well, it's already damaged. So we need to, need now to find out just how many of these revolting blackened traces still work. I mean, look at this. Look at him. He's terrible. Even up here, look at that. Don't normally see that. Don't normally see problems coming out the top of these guys. Oh dear, don't mind me, I'm just scraping. I've got a nice, uh, I don't know, it's alright, that was just an optical illusion. Still dead, no shorts either. Oh, I don't know. So, did you? Is it like a computer that you know was working, or did you sort of buy it in a non-working state? That's the LC, uh, LC three I'm referring to. So, in other words, do you kind of know the computer's history?
everyone getting their scrape fixed today? I hope so. Just a quick stream, I said. Just going to recap an SE30, I said. I'll be done in an hour, I said. Yay, 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 yay. Okay. Something okay, so I've been quite lucky with my board repairs. Looks like the leakage might have gone under those ICs. Uh, would ultrasonic cleaning, obsessive scrubbing get rid of it? Ultrasonic cleaning would be better um, because ultrasonic cleaning, uh, it cleans in nooks and crannies because of the way that it works as, as long as the uh, the area is underwater is under the water of the ultrasonic cleaner it will get cleaned um, yeah i've been paid for extra time this is true and in actual fact i can i can probably charge the client for this as well because this isn't just a recap this is a recap and repair so i'll be saying Pay up the big bucks, man. Oh, we've got breaks here, but you know what? There aren't as many as I thought there would be. Um, what am I going to do for dinner tonight? Hmm. Do I still have my uh, my two night owl mac yakas here, Dana and Jay? Just curious as to whether they're still here or whether they've uh, drifted off. I stole Dana's thunder. He was going to stream, stream, wasn't he? He was going to stream today. Ah, Jay's not here. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Dana's still here. Repasting a Mac Pro. Cool. Oh, and look, even Steve's here. I thought you, uh, yeah, I thought you went to sleep. <laughs> Wake up scraping. You have scrape dreams. So, um,. Dana, have you uh, solved your uh, streaming issues, or have you not got onto that yet? Because we want to see you doing more stuff. There is, in my opinion, there has been an unacceptable level of stuff being done. A distinct lack of stuff. When I'm doing all this scraping, uh, I do the old scrapey scrapey, expose the copper, and then I, of course, tin it, get solder on it. That helps to uh, protect it and to thicken it up a little bit as well. Uh, and then, of course, it also allows me to see where the problems are. Because you can see where the solder adheres compared to where the solder doesn't adhere. And then I can go back and say, oh, did I just not scrape it enough? Or is it actually a break? Let's 
Scrapey, scrapey. A wooga. <laughs> uh, what time is it, by the way? It is okay. Because I've got to, I've actually got to do work work at five thirty. I'm scheduled to do uh, some diagnostics on a server at five thirty. And that is in some minutes. That's no, in about a, what was it? Uh, it's nearly two hours. Okay. I don't expect to still be going in that length of time, I tell you. So don't panic. But you know what I really need to do when I'm going to do these live streams? If I'm planning to do a short one? Look at the board first. Yes, it, it's, it, you know, sort of, uh, so Nate's basically saying that he's doing his own work while he's listening, which is, that's what I do when I'm watching live streams as well, as much as possible. I try and work at the same time when I'm watching other people's live streams. You know, you just have a bit of stuff going in the background, a little bit of company and whatnot. Hmm. Should I take this component off? Should I take this component off and clean it? Repair the hard drive and save two terabytes from the scrap heap. Well done, Jay. And did you find any like really juicy stuff on that hard drive when you took it, when you uh, got it fixed up? Because I got the impression that someone was trying to, uh oh, uh oh. Anyone to see that? Because I'm glad I took this off. It's terrible underneath. Off to bed in 20 minutes. I'll, it'll be 6 in the morning here in the UK. <laughs> Fair enough. So I sort of need to stream late at night for the UK, I guess, don't I? See, my spidey senses told me I needed to take this component off. Oh, I just wiped and tested. Oh, that's not like you, Joe. But you wanted to see if you could find some dirt. Oh, the humanity. Oh, wow. I thought that pad was a goner. He's still there. Right, now, herein lies the problem. What have we got? We've got a 75175. Um, I don't have any spare. I don't think I have any spare of those. 
So is this going to be uh, like repairing chip time? Might have to buy one of these. What do you reckon? Hmm. See if any more pins fall off. Now, of course, this definitely shows signs of burning so you know I really should be replacing this component uh, I don't have one here I will probably need to order one in but let's see if I can get this going the way it is works Gotta clean under one of those pins. <laughs> ah, okay, who have we got? Drake9800. Guy okay, from Canada. Hello, you're soldering heaps. Soldering heaps. I am soldering heaps. Is there a go to utility for adjusting max CRT color geometry? Sit, spent six hours redoing the analog board of LC575. Now I'm cross eyed. Now there is. Uh, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, do Steve would be the person to speak to about that? Steve, are you still awake? Um, isn't there a, I'm sure there's some sort of, uh, there is, there's an Apple display utility or something like that. I think it might be on the Mac, on Macintosh garden or something like that. Um, there are two different versions of it, I think from memory and that, yeah, there's also that floppy one that there's that, that, that one that came with, um, what's his name book that has a. As one, it's just a, like a black and white one, but there is one I think designed for color, and it's uh, uh, yeah, it's called it's called Apple Display Utility or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it does exist. I have downloaded it. I do have it on one of my computers somewhere. Okay, now uh, let me think. What's of a similar vintage to this, where I might be able to raid this off a donor um what am i taking it's the something related to serial ports same vintage as an se30 crap uh see these aren't all donors some of these hmm <sighs> Test pattern generator, Larry Peanut. That's right. Yep, that's what I was thinking of. I've lost my original floppy from my Larry Peanut book. I've got the book down here, but the original floppy that came with it is long gone. Thankfully, we've got places like the Macintosh Garden where you can grab that. Now I've I'm attached. There we go. All right, so I'm just walking over here to my bucket of donor boards to see if I can find something that might be of a similar vintage. <sighs> no. Oh, so, what's that one? Oh, so, I see these are all newer. These are all newer boards. They're not going to have those sorts of chips on them. What's that one? No. So, what about a um, 2SI? I know it's newer, but similar sort of vintage. Uh, let's have a looky, have a looky, have a looky. Can't remember what the number was, can you? Uh, it was 75175. Let's just take a few moments for this poor 2SI who gave up his life. 
so that an SE30 may live, or at least the serial port. Uh. Long way around. Juicy. Okay. Problem solved. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. Now, uh, this is why we keep donor boards. This is why you hang on to those, you know, computers that the, the boards that just may not have any hope at all. You just uh, stick them, tuck them away, and you never know. One day, you go, oh, wow. Well, well, it's a good part to have. Right, I have one concern with this. Just one. There's this hole here. Because um, it does look like it's been burned a bit. Let's see if we can get to the other side of it. Uh, I've got to make, get, put my goggles on again because I can't see too good without this microscope. Is that one there? I think it's that one. I believe it's this guy here. This guy. Edge Studio Workshop, thank you for sticking around as long as you did. I say goodbye and sleep well. Well, try and sleep well. And you're obviously not sleeping well, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this stream at this ridiculous hour. But uh, thank you very much for joining. I do appreciate it. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. I poked a hoe. Okay. Let's see what we can do with that. Cut me some wire, run some wire down here. Was the 2SI dead due to a leaky battery? Absolutely indeedy and 100% correct. I'll show it to you in a sec. It is a really amazing looking thing. Quite spectacular. Um, the bit I showed you as I took that bit off, that was like the one part of the board that doesn't look too bad. When I have an opportunity to like this, to actually make that wire attached to, you know, another anchor point like this, I will take it. Just like that. And a little bit out of focus because it's the Branca stream. Focus. We don't need no stinking focus. Okay, now this is what I'm going to do here. I want to run this wire here, but if I just, if I don't go all the way, I always run the risk that this wire might move around. I want to be able to keep an eye on it, so that's why I'm hanging it out the end here. Um, I'm going to tin it, just like this, tin, 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 and then I'm going to wick it, like this, 
Okay. Then, and then, and then, I'm going to find that little uh, component that I just lost already. Here it is. I'm going to get some furks. Furks. There we go. So the Y is going to be underneath one of these pins, namely this pin on the end here. So I'm going to just bend that up a tiny bit for the wire to sit under it. And pull the pin down here. And focus. Okay. I'm going to put him there. I'm going to solder one of the easy bits first. Just going to do a little tack. A little bit of solder here and. Whoopsie. Thing you. And I'm going to put a little tack right there. There we go. That's reasonably secure now. This gives me enough now to do a little bit of drag soldering. Practice my drag soldering. Yep. Drag, drag. Drag, drag. Let me do this side. Drag, drag. Make sure that wires. That's probably a bit more solid than I need, but never mind. And then. Snip. And we're done. Oops, and you didn't get to see any of that because I was off camera. Sorry, folks. Once again, here's a Branker strain. Alright. Um, how can I extract files from the Macintosh gun? They seem to be in dot MD5. Do I ch charge extra for parts I have to salvage? Often, yes. Uh, it does depend on the part. It depends on the rarity of that part. Uh, a part like this, I can just buy from. Uh, you know, this this would st I would still be able to buy a part like this today from like DigiKey or RS Components or Mouser or something like that. So it's not particularly rare or anything like that. If I was to actually go and buy one of these new, it's probably only going to be a few dollars. So, you know, I'm going to charge them a component price. If I was, for example, putting on a flyback transformer from a Mac Plus or something like that, I would charge a lot more because they're quite rare. Big R, little A, big R, little E, rare. Ah, what is that other brand of flux that worked out? Uh, it worked okay for you, Bruce. This is... This one here is uh, Interflux, I-N-T-E-R-F-L-U-X, Interflux IF8300. So that's what I'm using at the moment until my Amtec finally arrives, if it ever does arrive. Um, so frustrating. Um, so I'm just going to show you what this uh, 2SI board looks like that I just rated that part from. I've rated some other parts from it as well. Now, there are meant to be components here and 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 here. So there's been a few things removed. And this has had some really, really bad battery leakage. You may not be able to see it, but all of the chip, all of the pins or the legs off this chip are all gone from down one side so yeah battery explosion this is where the c uh the cpu used to be and there's always burning around here shocker game over man game over uh wrong button let's go to this one so we are i feel getting somewhere um no one else may feel that way but i do
Okay. So, what do we have to repair here? What do we have to repair? Now, is that a break? Or do we have copper? We have the teeniest amount of copper there. But should we repair it? Maybe. What about here? Good. Here. Good. Here. Not so good. Here. Good. A little bit out of focus. Oh, okay. Oopsie. Uh, 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 uh. Oopsie. Now, this one here is obviously going to have to be fixed. Got one here and one here. There's no doubt about the fact that this is not just a little bit of top corrosion that's corroded to the core. I should probably run something through that one, shouldn't I? Look how yucky he is. Ew, it's disgusting. Right, okay, I'm going to do this one as well. That's the bottom one. Okay. Here we are. Zoom, 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 zoom. zoom. Yeah, I've got. I've actually got another two SI board here that also doesn't work, but it one's got a lot more parts on it, so uh, that's handy to have. It was one that I actually had working once. I bought it. I bought two, uh, both with battery damage and capacitor damage, and I. The hope was that I would be able to, from the two, get one working, and I did for a little bit. Got that one of them working, and then it stopped working, and I was never able to figure out why. And then I uh, got another one, and the other one worked beautifully. So I now have uh, lots of spare 2SI bits. I've got spare fans, I've got spare cases, I've got spare power supplies. Which is handy, especially seeing as, uh, oh, what do I do? Oh, that's right, I'll repair things. Except for that 2SI, didn't repair that, did I? Because it was sad about old Eddie Van Halen, wasn't it? That threw me for six when I found that out. Ah, uh, Tech and Music, good morning. Late stream today, I see. Indeed, indeed. What time is it where you are, Tech and Music? I'm working on an SE30 here that I I got two SE30s from the same customer. And the first one came in and it was ridiculously clean. There was one little, well, I should say three. Three little trace breaks that I had to repair and do a recap. And the thing was up and running and away we went. And I went, ah, sweet. Okay, I'm going to live stream the next one I do. I'll pick up the next board and it was an absolute train wreck. This is the shock of this one. I have just been repairing and repairing and repairing and repairing. 
And of course, the hope is that at the end of it, it'll work, but <laughs> who knows? Seven AM. So does that mean you are somewhere in the vicinity of like uh, Europe? Do, 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 do. I'll be so happy when I finish this bit. Netherlands! Aha! Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The thing that always impresses me so much about Europe and various other places in the world is they've all got their own language, but they all seem to be able to speak English as well. Um... And when I, coming from a country like Australia, where, you know, obviously we speak English and there are languages taught in our school and everything like that, but, you know, most people in Australia, unless they've, you know, maybe potentially come from another country or have chosen to electively um, study a particular language, they can only speak English, nothing else. And I sort of think, that's a bit friggin' lazy. Myself included, I include myself in that laziness. <sighs> Jeez, clocks, red light district and weed. <laughs> now it's a shithole, what a terrible thing to say. What right do you think you have to say that about the Netherlands, Joe? Mm. Ugh, goopity, goopity, goop, goop. Call me an expert. <laughs> You can't really be an expert if you're not there anymore, can you? Hmm? Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. Bit time for now. E by zero five. So sorry that I didn't see that before. Told you I read in in, in in the weird way. I read up and down. Thank you very much. Dead to us. I've already read that, haven't I? Yep, okay. Good, 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 good. good. Excellent. Yes, good. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Oopsie. So now we get to the... We're getting to what I believe is towards the end of this repair. I am hoping that I will have an opportunity to test this live stream. I won't run out of time and have to dash off. Okay, there's one little trace repair. Now, the real struggle I'm going to have with this one, for anyone who's done any trace repair, will probably recognize this struggle before I even say it. And that is that the next trace repair I have to do is right next to the first one. Which means I'll probably end up stuffing up the first one while I do the second one. I'm doing for viewers. I've got no idea how many people are watching at the moment. 34. I've been sitting fairly steadily on the mid 30s throughout this, so thank you for everyone uh, being here and keeping me company during this troubling time for this poor SE30. Getting a little bit of uh, late night, late afternoon, early morning, depends where you are, surgery.
still haven't figured out what I'm having for dinner. Hmm. We'll see. Other than why. Um, if anyone's watching this and sort of is sort of thinking, ah, oh, you make that look easy. I apologise. Um, I will say that the microscope makes a huge difference to doing this sort of trace repair. Um, so I'm not going to just accept all the responsibility. Quite happy to just say, yeah, it's the microscope that does all the hard work. Uh, but, um, you know, as much as I do encourage people to do their own uh, recaps and do their own work and all that sort of stuff, there are times where I will say that if you've got a board that's like this and has this sort of damage, it's probably not a bad idea to send it to someone with a microscope. Excuse me, just burped while I was talking there. Excuse me. Um, because they are likely to be able to do the job a lot easier than someone without a microscope. All right, well, I think I had one up here. Yeah, this one here, I wouldn't mind putting something on that one. It's just the one that looks a little bit ugly. Ugly. Okay. And hug scope, yes. Uh, you have to admit, Steve. You have got to admit that uh, as as much as as an investment as it was, it's a rather awesome thing to have when you're doing recapping and board repairs. Um, I really felt that when. I was buying all this stuff, and keeping in mind that I was buying all this stuff to work on modern computers, not vintage ones. The vintage stuff came a little bit later. When I bought all this stuff, you know, every every piece of equipment that I bought, there was a, a measurable improvement. You know, the, the, the soldering iron was way better than the old soldering iron I used to use. The hot air station was way better than the whole old hot air station I used to use. Um, the... Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, there was a, a definite improvement with all these things, but the one that I think was the most sort of measurable in terms of the the, the impact that it had of what I was doing was the microscope. And interestingly enough, when I first bought the microscope, I didn't buy any sort of camera for it. I had zero intention of actually live streaming or recording any of this stuff. None whatsoever. Uh, that came a little bit later. And I thought, yeah, I wouldn't mind filming some of this stuff. My ego just got too big. I thought, yep, got to share this stuff around. When I look at this here, there are potential problems, shall we say? If this computer doesn't work when I first when I go to use it, uh, when I go to test it. Um, there are certainly plenty of things here that I will be checking with the multimeter and, that, and whatnot things. Hello, Jeff Barnard. How are you? Right. Just cleaning this up so that I can get some UV solder mask on it so I can then put some caps in place. Because, wow, what a mess. What a mess. What a mess. Okay, let's uh, get into the little painting. What's the name of that painting, dude? Bob Ross, is that it? Keeping in mind, of course, that is uh, not really a household name here in Australia. a reminder to anyone here who is 
a it's, well, actually, just a reminder to anyone whether they are a MacYak viewer or not, um, that this week, our MacYak show, which is going to be on, well, on my time, it's Friday morning, but it's uh, for US Eastern time, it is on Thursday evening. It's going to be a retro-themed show. Yes, sirree, yes, sirree. We have Sean from At Action Retro guesting on the program. Uh, so anyone who's been watching that video of his cursed SE30, which has been very entertaining for us all, and all of the various other stuff that he does as well, he put his RGB lights in his cube. Um, he is guesting on the show, and we're going to have a retro theme show. We're going to be talking about all things retro, which means that I'll probably be yabbering the whole time. And Steve... Um, you reckon? You reckon there's a break there? Doesn't look too good, does it? Might be getting a little bit uh, premature with my UV mask here on that one. Geez, I can't wait to get some caps on here. I just feel like I've been doing this forever. Just forever. So anyone who doesn't know what MacYak is, MacYak is a show that I appear on. I am a member of the MacYak group. We get together, not always the same people. We have essentially the same group of people for MacYak, but we're not always, not everyone is on every show. And uh, we get together and we talk about everything uh, Apple and Mac. Um, we talk about the good, we talk about the bad. We talk about the hardware, we talk about the software, we talk about the culture. Um, and uh, and we try and make each other laugh in the process. So it's always fairly light-hearted. Particularly last week, very light-hearted. When two of the members of the group got the giggles partway through the show. Because of the way Jay was eating a cookie. But... Uh, yeah. All right. All right, 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 all right. Wasn't just me. I did say two members. I said two members got the giggles. Uh. Whoopsie. So please, anyone who can uh, watch, please jump on and watch, have a look at MacYak and maybe even jump on and grab a few of the old episodes because we're uh, we're looking to try and get a few extra viewing hours on the thing so that we can hit the uh, requirements that uh, YouTube have for uh, being sort of a monetized channel. Our goal is that uh, any revenue that we make from advertising is going to be used to try and get the MacYak group all together in one room for a super special show with everyone there. Except me, of course, because I don't think we'll ever end up with enough money to get me out of there. I'll be the one sad little remote guy. Just sitting here with all my snakes and spiders. <clears throat> oh, Jesus, what, what am I sitting on? Ow. What was the, uh... <laughs> I'm going to say it. I was sitting on a probe uh, for my uh, um, multimeter. Not a UV mask here. This computer is a UV mask fest. I tell you what, if this thing works first go, this will just be like, it will just be caused to break out the champagne or something because I'm not feeling very confident. <laughs> uh, yeah, still got one, two, I think one, two, 
three more caps after doing these four. So we'll ship you over, Bruce. <laughs> you, you keep saying the postage isn't too bad. Well, it is. It, it, it is for smaller items. The bigger the items get, the worse the worse the postage costs are. I wouldn't want to send a large package. I'm a fairly large package. Well, certainly heavy anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, I just want to check this one because, you know, it looks terrible. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? It's good. It's good. It's fine. Yes. I can't believe it. It looks terrible, though, doesn't it? I'm just doing that so that when I put some solder on it, it might get a nice glob going across there. Okay. Focus. Right. How, how did we feel about the dryness? Did, did we feel like that was dry enough? Seemed like it was getting pretty dry. I'm not going to be too concerned about where these caps sit. I normally try and get these to be all lovely and symmetrical when I position them. But in this one, I am more concerned about just making sure that they're on there. Right, let's start off with the one little one, which I believe is a one microfarad 50 volt. I shall check my cheat sheet. 105. 105. 105. One microfarad 50 volt. Have you installed that Barlow lens yet? Yes, you are looking through it right this moment. Gave me about an two, two and a half extra inches of height, something like that. Uh, it makes me go a bit cockeyed when I zoom right in, but uh, apart from that, pretty good. Yeah, good, thanks. Okay, I can't remember which way around this goes. I think all the positives are on the left. In actual fact, every capacitor on this board has a positive on the left. That makes it nice and easy to remember, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, I worked without the Barlow for a really long time. I thought it was going to be a bigger impact. Is it an impact? Yes. Is it a huge impact? Maybe not so much. What we're looking at here is an AVX capacitor. I, these are the ones that I used to buy. I now buy Kemet. 1 of the things I prefer about the Kemet capacitors is they have the voltage written on them. And if if you happen to be in a position where you accidentally spill every single tantalum capacitor you own onto the floor, it's very helpful when the capacitors actually have the voltage on them as well as the capacitors. Every single one signing off good night rick fleming thank you for joining thank you for sticking around as long as you did i do thank everyone who has actually been watching and i uh, quite understand if people need to take off because while well, i've been going for a while now what a i started at two or something didn't i so to my time so that's two and a half hours i've been going for <sighs> this is a shocker this one shocker quick easy one he said can you believe it Hopefully there'll be some battery holders waiting for me when I get back up to the house. I was expecting a delivery today from Element 14 of some battery holders. They're ones that I use for uh, the Mac 2. Uh, the Mac 2 has um, originally had two soldered on batteries and I like to replace them with battery holders, but not all battery holders fit because they have to be right next to each other. And some of the battery holders are a little bit too wide. And so when you go to put them on, you can get one on, but you can't get any more than one on. And you need two on the Mac 2, of course. So uh, I had to order a different type of battery holder. It's one that I, I used to have heaps of, but I used them all. Um, and then when I replaced them, I went, oh, I'm going to replace them with these ones. These look better. And then I re it was only then that I realized that the new ones that I bought didn't fit on the Mac 2. So that 
the moral to that story. Um, if you're going to buy something different, research it first to make sure it's going to do all the same stuff as the other one did. Otherwise you come off looking like a wally. <sighs> so the, uh, the two main supplies that I use here in Australia are Element 14 and um, RS Components. Now the reason why I specifically use those two is because they both have actual offices and warehouses here in Australia. Um, whereas ones like DigiKey and Mouser, although they have an Australian website, I'm pretty sure everything comes from overseas because pretty much everything I've ever ordered from them takes you know a good probably week to arrive. Whereas Element 14 and RS Components, I can get things next day. Um, so that's kind of why I use them. Um, there are times when I end up having to use uh, DigiKey or Mouser simply because they are the only ones that have what I want. Is that a trace break under there? Mm hmm. What do you think? What do you think? Or is that just going to be some ugly copper underneath it? Yeah, we're good. No trace break. What about there? No, no trace break. Oh, we're having a good day with this one. I'm going through a lot of tissues in this. That was a good day. Am I inadvertently feeding pigeons? Mm -mm -mm. Stepping out for 10 minutes, Meatball will keep you company. Hello, Meatball. Meow. Meow. I love Meatball. Meatball is uh, Jay, House of Moth's cat, and he is a very chatty animal. Often when we're uh, chatting away there, we can hear Meatball in the background chatting to us as well. Meatball. Okay, I um I am going to paint the uh, the bejesus out of this board when I'm finished with this UV solder mask. But for now, I'm just painting the parts that are going to impact on the components that I'm putting on. What what's that? Is that just a dot on top? You can't see it. Yep, just a dot on top. Copper's still fine. So yeah, once, once this all gets cleaned, it's going to have to be painted. I mean, look at some of these. I mean, you know, there could be a million and one busted traces with these as well. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So for anyone who does stick around till I get to the testing point, which we are getting closer to now, by the way, I just want to remind everyone to set their expectations accordingly, that there is a very high likelihood that this will not work. Because uh, it was such a train wreck when it arrived. Um, more caps. Michael, hello, how are you? Michael is the person who uh, has sent me the Macintosh 2CX I was talking about earlier on in this stream that I still haven't had a chance to open up and have a look at yet, but I will be doing that. I will be doing that this evening. Um, and of course I need to photograph the board as well because I have uh, I don't have a 2CX on my recapping guide. So I need to make sure I have that. So. Uh, uh, didn't get a notification this time. Yeah, it, it happens sometimes. I mean, you know, I, I just don't know what the story is with YouTube notifications. Everyone talks about it all the time. It's like sometimes they, sometimes they go out and other times they don't. I mean, I didn't really do much in the way of advertising this live stream. 
Um, still managed to get quite a few people turn up, so obviously notifications did go out, but they just don't go out to everyone. And that's something that people complain about all the time, so it's not like it just happens to me. Off to bed this time for real? Oh, come on, Steve, really? Really, really? Are you sure? You didn't want to see this SE30 not work? <laughs> Good night, Steve. Thank you very much for joining. It's been a big old day for you, hasn't it? Or evening. There's the uh, uh, thingy, computer plan. And I was talking about that at the beginning of the stream. That feels like such a long time ago now. It's because it was. <laughs> yeah, no, I quite understand, Steve. I totally understand how exhausting that would have been. Sitting there just chatting away to uh, to Ken. Having to stay on your toes. Yes, I am inadvertently feeding pigeons at the moment. My chicken food is over there, and the door that's meant to be shut has fallen open. And so now there are pigeons in there eating my chicken food. I'm not happy about it. Um... Two more, two more to go. Both of these have burning on them as well, which is great. As you can see, all the blackening on there. Uh, I'd say there's a good chance we might lose a pad on this one, but thankfully this one won't require too much repair work because it's just that great big slab of copper around there. So I can just scrape all this crap off. Scrape, 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 scrape. Chickens, pigeons, eggs or eggs? Well, yeah, um, one thing I can confirm is that the eggs that I get from my chickens are unfertilized. I cannot guarantee that with the pigeon ones. And the other thing is that pigeons don't lay quite as often as the chickens do. Alright, let's get some flux onto this and do some proper work. Uh -oh. Right, so let's just keep uh, keep cleaning here. Oops, I need to get that blob of solder off, or it's going to stuff me up. Oopsie. So this one does look pretty bad, but of course the good thing is that it's just one. Whereas what I was dealing with before was this times four or times three. I should just call this live stream. I'm going to go back and rename it. Instead of uh, calling it like repairing an SE30, I'm just going to say Branker Scrapes. Uh, 
yeah okay boy this 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 one is really taking it out of me i'm telling you i really hope i don't have to deal with a, a mac as bad as this again for a long time remember folks if you haven't had your se 30 recapped yours could look like this don't let it happen cruelty to se 30s it's not worth it these things are worth money don't throw your investment away Oh, what's happening? It's loudly screeching out of the headphone port. Uh, uh, am I having sound issues? Am I having sound issues? No, that sounds okay. Let me know if there are audio issues. I've been going long enough now that the battery in this little guy could be starting to go flat. All right, well, this thing is going to be no thing of beauty, but that's not really my concern. My primary concern is to make sure that it actually uh, connects up. Oh, I think I'm about to get a visit by someone. Let's see how this looks. Just uh, bear with me a second. Oops, I'm back. Right. So, my thought is to just check and see how these look on the other side. Um, oh, upsie. Sounds okay. That's good. Whoops. I was talking about the Power Mac board a few messages back. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, recently recapped the Power Mac 8100 board. It was pretty bad cap wise. One fell off. Don't have a video adapter. Can't test it much. Hmm. Now, the. 8100, yeah, okay. Yep, fair enough. Yep, yep, yep. I've got an 8500 here. I do believe you can use the same power supply with those, but yeah, I mean, unless you've got the little video adapter, there's not much you can do. Ding, 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 ding. Um, I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of that shaped computer. As much as I love the 840AV, anyone who knows me knows that I do love the 840AV, which is in a similar sort of shape. Uh, I find them such an impractical computer with their, uh, uh, with the way you need to dismantle them. Oops, I get so annoyed when you have to, um, you have to remove the new bus cards and everything and just, you know, to, for pulling it apart. Okay, just like to do that. Let's keep an eye on it. Let's have a look at you from here. There we go. Yeah. Yes, they did give up quite easily, didn't they? Uh, I do feel like um, I should put 
a wire through here. I would just feel better about it. Um, so here's another one. Just finding little off cuts here at the moment. Floating around. The wood root should be if I get it working, I want to stick it in an ATX PC case. Yeah. It's a little bit of my glove on the board there. My little latex glove is falling apart. It's my second set. I actually uh, I have stronger gloves here, but they don't have powder. So I can't get my fat hands into them without covering them in like tackle powder first. And I can't be bothered doing that, so I just uh, go through a lot more of these latex ones. Yay! Right. Now. Uh, I've been a bit of an idiot. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what I do. I'm going to do this. And it's not like me to be an idiot. <laughs> I'm only joking. It's very like me. An idiot. Oh, Bruce, that's so you. I want to create a solder ball there. And I want to create a solder ball here. There's a ball in there. And a chair as well. I actually got hold of a Quadra 950 board a long time ago, and I um, uh, and I was going to repair it and try and put that in the case, but I I just couldn't imagine what case I'd be able to put it in. The 950 board is so huge, but I ended up getting quite lucky and getting an, an actual 950. The only thing I'm missing is the key. If anyone has a spare key for a 950, I would like one, please. Go a little bit of mask. I'm not going to go too crazy here. I'm going to paint a lot of it when I'm finished, but for now, I'll just paint a little bit down here. Just need to make sure the pin from this one doesn't touch that or this. This side doesn't matter. Come on, let's get this big on there. Yeah. Oh, man. This is an SE30 of fun. Can't believe this. Just can't believe this. I'm definitely going to learn my lesson from this one. Look at the board before live streaming, you idiot. You're pretty sure you have one and you have like a spare that'd be awesome donor i would uh, love to have that little key we probably talked about this before i will cover the rest jay but i'm going to do it after the board's been ultrasonically cleaned so i'm only covering the parts here that are likely to impact on the, the capacitor being put on here uh, and then i'll come back and uh, and paint all this other stuff once it's all been ultrasonically cleaned and assuming it's working, of course. Yeah, see this black gun that you see around here? This, it is actually, that what you're looking at there is a, like a void. It's not gunk sitting on top of metal or something like that. It's actually a void in the metal because what happened with this here is it's created a short the uh, electrolytes created a short between these two and it's burned. It has actually burned. So that's what you're looking at there is the result of burning. The one bad thing about this uh, flux syringe is that when I put it down, it keeps squeezing stuff out. So I've got flux all over the friggin' table.
Right. Jeez, we're getting so close here, guys. So close. I can almost taste it. I will have to go up to the house and grab my SC30 because I didn't bring it down here. Because I did absolutely no preparation for this uh, this stream, which should be fairly obvious to everyone now. Um, I just basically, uh, I was like chatting to my uh, fellow Mac Yakkers and I was saying, hey, you know what, I'm about to go work on an SE30, who wants to jump on a Skype with me? And then Jay said, Skype? Why don't you stream it? And I'm like, well, I don't really have a good reason why not. I've got plenty of good reasons now. Like, this SE30 is a nightmare. Like, it's shaving years off my life as we, as we talk. Throwing me under the bus again. Yeah, well, you did say it. But you do have to admit, I didn't take a whole lot of convincing, did I? Okay, now let's just uh, fix up those little things. Where did you get your UV laser pen from? I'm pretty sure I bought mine from uh, uh, E of the Bay. Um, I did a googly search for 405 NM nanometers, I assume. Uh, UV laser. Just be careful though, because there are some on eBay where they say it's a laser and then it has like a UV torch as well. Uh, you don't want that. You want a UV laser. So that you can shoot stormtroopers. All right, now. I've got one more, I believe. This one is also burnt, so let's see what we get here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, one more to go. There are 11 surface mount capacitors on this, so one more left. See, we've got some burning, burning here again. Uh, oh, and I guess this little guy, I saw that before. I was wondering when he was going to turn up. I couldn't remember where I saw him. It's got this little bit of blackening here next to this diode. I need to buy some 5D diodes. I really do. They're on all these. Come on, the prize. I want to get this. I want to get this all done. Do you think I should probably have contacted the client first and asked if they wanted to spend the money? I mean, I've just assumed, given the fact that they sent them all the way from Canada, they were probably prepared to pay for me to do it. Yes, I do appreciate it. I, I I cannot deny the generosity of the people who have been watching this with the Super Chats has been absolutely wonderful. And it does make me feel better about how frustrating this thing has been. You know, when, um, you know, sort of, 
police are witness to her terrible vehicle accidents and they come away from those accidents and they and they say to people just slow down guys stop speeding i don't want to see any more of this just slow down well after working on this board i'm just going to be going around saying just recap people just recap i don't want to have to look at this anymore recap come on Going to do a little bit of scrapey, scrapey. Here's your scar. So you're in a skimpy dress shop. <laughs> Nearly at work. Don't worry. I'm not chat, uh, chatting behind the wheel. Going to have to watch muted uh, to see if she'll work. Okay, no worries. All right, we are getting close. This is this is quite literally the last. Uh, you know, crime scene on the board, so. Okay, well that's good. There was corrosion there, but it's not broken by the looks of it. Where is it? No, it's not the best. I better run a wire there. God, I've got half an hour until I have to go and work. You know, like proper work. And I mean, that, that, that's, that's all scheduled in for this repair work. I, I absolutely cannot miss that deadline, so. Oh well. I just have to work faster. Working faster, this is me working faster. Okay. Because we've got a few uh, trace breaks here, so I'm definitely gonna be uh, once again, earning my keep on this one. But as you have seen from this, that I am getting pretty quick at these. And we get the old wick. I'll tell you what, from looking at this board, I'm certainly not surprised it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was really hoping this last one would be an easy one. I was really hoping. But yeah, I've been through so much with this board. This last one, this will be a walk in the park. There'll be no, no damage traces. It'll just be replacing a capacitor. Yay. Nope. Nope, it'll be... Uh... Well, let's see what we got here. We got uh, Cyril's... Uh... Well, we got one. We got two. We got three. We got four. And a half. All right. Well, no time like the present. Let's get into it.
And I've probably been moving a little bit faster with this than I normally do on a live stream. I'm, you know, usually working a lot slower in live streams, so <clears throat> that's a good thing, I guess. For all involved. SE30 Surgery. <laughs> You're having fun with, in, with your, uh, your Mac Pro there, are you, Dana? Sounds like you're having fun. Was wondering the sound of that bird that just chirped in the background there. That is a coel. They come around this time of year. It's a type of cuckoo. So they lay their eggs in other birds' nests. And they fly south to Australia for the warmer seasons. They come down here, they lay their eggs in another bird's nest, they go away. And they come back and collect their babies to head back up north again when it gets cold. And they're very noisy. Where's the break on this one? Is there a break on this one? I'm not sure there is. I think it's just this one. JJ Brubaker. A little late to the party, maybe a little early to the party. I, I'm not sure that I can actually go out and say in, in clear conscience that um, uh, that you've missed much. Um, uh, the story is that I basically uh, I recapped and repaired an SE30 today. And it went really well. And I was feeling so good about that, about getting it repaired, that I decided I would work on this other SE30 that I had here as well, from the same customer. Both of these boards have come from Canada. Uh, you know, long distance recap here. Um, and so I was thinking, feeling super energized, come down here, recap another SE30 and it'll be great. And then I thought, with a little bit of nudging, I thought, Oh, I'm going to live stream it as well. Well, this board has been a nightmare. It is one of the worst boards I have ever seen in terms of damage, corrosion, burning. It's been an absolute shocker. I have been at this now for three and a half hours. The one bright side is that I've got quite a few super chats, so that's made me feel a little bit better about doing this live stream today. Um, I will be able to charge the customer a little bit more for this because it is not just a straight rate capping, it's very much a repair as well. Um, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much the, uh, the long and short of it. That's the general gist. Um, this is the very last of the service mount capacitors I need to put on. I need to stick on a couple of uh, axials as well, but they only take a few minutes. Um, but I think I've been left scarred for life by this SE30. And I've spent most of this live stream scraping corrosion off the board. Corrosion and burn stuff. And so I was thinking that what I might do, and I'm, you know, a little bit later on when I, I'll go and make a thumbnail for the video and stuff like that, I'm going to probably rename the live stream Brankus Scrapes. 
because I have just been scraping and scraping and scraping and scraping. Mm-hmm. 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 Man, oh, man, oh, man. And so here I was just thinking, oh, man, I fixed that other SE30 so quickly. This is going to be a really quick live stream, this one. I didn't look at it. I didn't look at the board. I didn't take it in until I'd already started live streaming. And then I was like, oh, my goodness. What have I done? It's another fine mess I've gotten myself into. I really should have on here. I just don't like the look of the blackness of some of those. This is this is this is absolutely what you don't do. What I'm doing right now, and that is do a trace repair in between two other trace repairs. That's just it's you're just asking for trouble. Now, you may recognise that I've got a lovely big uh, bridge there. <laughs> but I can sort that out nice and easily. With some magical flux. Magical flux. Jeez. It scares me when that happens. If you're wondering what that noise was, it was uh, figs falling off the fig tree onto the top of this roof of this fancy studio. Which may seem like a shed, but, you know. Alright. Why? Oh, and I wanted to, yeah, get a little bit of wire up here as well. Just under this one. I just think it would be beneficial. I started off this live stream with all of my Mac yet, or most of my Mac yet friends watching and everything like that. And then they've all just dropped off one at a time as it's just kept going and going and going. I've still got Dana and Jay here. They're such troopers. Thank you, fellas, for sticking around. And, of course, to everyone else who's watching. I can't imagine there's many people watching now. 34. Well, it's drifted down a little bit, but I'm still... Uh, I've still got a few. Oh, well, actually, that's... Yeah. That's, that's cool. And Thomas is still here. That's excellent. We've got the stairs here. I, I re you know, imagine if this thing worked. Imagine. It'd almost, almost be rewarding. For all the people that have invested all that time. Uh, this is a difficult one because I want to try and get this dry and get some UV solder mask onto this, but oh yeah, I'm worried about doing exactly what I just did then. What do I do here? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Do you hear that board? It's one, 
11. 111 in Canada. There we go. Let me have a look here. I seriously, I am such a moron. I, you know, I, I am really, really stupid. And, uh, and I just want to apologize for my stupidity that Tom Armstrong, Thomas Armstrong, is the Tom Armstrong who belongs to this board. So um, I, uh, I wasn't really paying attention properly before, and perhaps my brain is a little bit slow, but this particular uh, board does belong to Tom. Um, so, uh, so Tom, this is your board. And you've probably known all along, and I've just been sitting here like a moron, not realising that you're watching and it's actually your board. And it wins the prize, by the way, Tom. This is, uh, this is the ugliest SE30 board I've ever seen in my life. So congratulations. Is it pretty? Thank you, uh, Ruggers Customs. Is it is it really pretty? <laughs> it's nice of you to say. You have a worse one. <laughs> oh dear. That's not what I want to hear. So this one here, um, obviously the biggest problem with this is that it, 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 it burns. The shorts, the shorts actually created heat and burningness. And so that has then resulted in a lot of this trace damage that you see. It's actually melted that, you know, burned away the copper. So um, that is the biggest issue we have with this one here. Um, some of the other ones I see terrible corrosion and you know you can see the corrosion eating away and everything but that corrosion is probably a little bit more slow acting with this this burning is something that's likely to have happened quite quickly but I have got to really move it I've got to really move it I really didn't think I'd still be streaming at 5 30 or quarter past 5 p.m. I've still got to go out and do some shopping. I can be a little bit late for what I need to do, but only a matter of minutes. But this is definitely, without a doubt, one of the slowest and of course the big problem we do have with this is as I say I've cleaned up everything that I can see there could be an awful lot of stuff I don't see and I would say as I said before I reckon we've probably got about a 50 50 chance it'll work uh, I'll probably need to go back and spend a lot more time hunting things down and checking traces and just looking really really closely Okay, time for our last surface mount capacitor to go on. Yeehaw. Okay. Well, the power side was a mess too, wasn't it? A broken socket, less corrosion. I, I think I would probably favour a broken socket over the corrosion on this. Um, but, uh, all right. Took so long cleaning that my my soldering iron went to sleep. Oi. It's hard to get these things perfect when they look this bad. I can but try. A lot more flux on that. Thank you. Right, let's do the other side. 
Come on. Need to get this at a good angle. And then we've got the easy part. A couple of uh, axial caps go on. Okay. There we go. That's it for the surface mount capacitors. Woo! Right. Axials. Down here. Oh, they're never far away. 470, 220, 220 can go on first, there's me uh, tweezers, always losing my tweezers, there we are, oh hello there Pat R, Pat R being my mother, And who have we got? The new BH. Hello. So we are drawing to the end here. This has been an absolutely ridiculously long live stream. And I thank everyone who has uh, persevered. I was not expecting it to be this long. I was expecting this to be like about an hour. Recap an SE30. Yeah, I can do that with my eyes closed. I'm glad I didn't do this with my eyes closed. Okay, one more capacitor. Then we can test it out. And hopefully it'll work. But it probably won't. I not clear that hole. I did not clear either of those holes. Did we miss a step here? Okay, this ought to be nice and easy. Boom, like that. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, it's like that it was going to be easy and then I stuffed it up I blame myself there we go now, this one's always the difficult one I often end up having to get the uh, the large tip out for this one because it's a big ground plane lots and lots of uh, heat dissipation um, sometimes get lucky but Okay. All right. Try it from this side. And sometimes get lucky just coming at it from the other side. But not today. Add more solder, because that's what we do when we're trying to get the solder away, because solder likes hanging out with solder. Come on. Whoopsie. <sighs> Jay, have to depart, Bruce. Good luck on the test. Thank you very much. My apologies. You weren't able to stick around long enough to see it all, but I do understand this has probably gone a little bit longer than you expected when you originally suggested the idea that I stream. And we're through. Got those damn CPUs out. Awesome. Does that mean you're going to go as well now, Dana? 
You leave me here on my own? Well, not on my own. But last of the Mac Yakers. Minus. 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 Cool. I always like to check that I get these things on the right way around because uh, well, I have put them around the wrong way before. I once did, very early on in my recapping, I actually once did an entire computer with every single capacitor on backwards. You might think, well, how on earth did you do that? Well, it was back in the days, really early days, where I forgot that the um, stripe was on the positive side of tantalum as compared to the stripe being on the negative side of electrolytics, something I talk about all the time in my live streams now. But at that time, I did not know in the early days. Right, let's just get some RAM on this and then I'll go up and I'll grab the... Uh, I've got a ROM here. Now, as I said, high, very high likelihood of not workage. So, just, you know, I will of course then have to come back to this, but I'll come back to it with not live streaming, because, well, you guys have suffered enough. What is that? Okay. Right, I am going to press the little be right back button, because I need to go up and grab the SE30 case so uh, um, ooh, I better zoom out for this too so right here comes the testing stage I will be back in just a moment Hey, this is my SE30, and I am going to put this board into it. In front of this is going to end up with flux on it, but that's okay. Flux cleans off nice and easily. That's upside down. Just, I'm, I'm just running through my head that this might actually work. And what a joyous thing that would be. Sorry, this is getting stuck on something. Yep, there it is. One of these days, I'm going to make myself up a double length cable for both the uh, speaker and for that uh, that power cable so that I can test these things outside of the chassis. And you can kind of hang them over the edge. Uh, you can't get the speaker on it, but you can at least uh, get the um, get the power cable connected and hang them off the back. I'll do that. All right. Okay. You ready, folks? Uh, there will be no delay, there will be no huge drum roll. This will just be me trying it out and totally expecting it not to work. Um, we're almost definitely going to get just sort of weird patterns or something like that. But anyhow, let's have a go. Three, two, one. It's your home. Can you believe it?
well. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! We've, and I've got three minutes to spare. Oh, crikey. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, this one certainly made me work for it, that's for sure. <laughs> well, uh, the fantastic news is uh, to... Um, uh, where is he? To Thomas Armstrong. This is the second board. It is working. Your first board is already repaired. That's over there in the heater and everything. So both your boards are working. So we can look at getting these sent back to you. So uh, yeah, joy oh joy. This is uh, this is a successful uh, successful repair recap. So that's wonderfully rewarding uh, after all the uh, the hassle that I just went through. I'm now going to have to uh, clean it. I'm going to have to uh, paint like you know like five gallons of UV solder mask on all of those uh, exposed traces and everything like that. But at the end of the day, it does work. So I would like to say a big thank you, a huge thank you just to go out to uh, House, uh, House of Moth Jay for that super chat. And of course, to everyone else who has been watching and also gave me the uh, the super chats today. Um, absolutely wonderful. Um, really, um, really appreciate all of those, uh, you know, sort of all of those contributions. It's absolutely uh, fantastic. So, uh, I will say uh, farewell to everyone. There'll be no chit chat because, as I say, I've got to go off and do some other work now. And uh, I will uh, hopefully see you at the next stream. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for the company while I've been doing this horrible work. So, thanks again, guys. See you all later. <laughs>